Google is putting AI everywhere. Just deal with it. AMD's launching some cheaper chips and Nvidia's doing the opposite with their graphics card. They're, they're, they're really expensive. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, May 15th, 2024. We're gonna start off today recapping Google's IO event yesterday, which as you could possibly guess, based on the hullabaloo that's going around every single company, it was about AI and they counted that they said it at least 120 times in their speech and they used AI to tabulate that because they imported all the scripts. Regardless, they are just announcing a bunch of different AI things that they're gonna be bringing to their various different things that they have right now. You got stuff like asking Google Photos to search things for you and can contextually find, hey, find my license plate and it knows what car is yours. Or Google search will now show AI generated search results by default to you, which in one respect, feels like they're just cramming it down our throats and it's not necessarily useful but in another respect it's very similar to just like the locations when I when I search for food it'll automatically just try to find something that's near me and the example that they use is you trying to plan a specific type of anniversary date in a specific city at a specific time of year and it'll try to give you ideas for that I don't know if this is going to make things more or less convenient uh, it continuously brings up the question of the chicken and the egg when it comes to money monetization, if you take away people's necessity to click through to the platforms that are generating this content for you, then they're going to stop having the incentive to make this content that, that you are serving up to everybody. And then therefore you're not going to have that content to serve up anymore. And therefore you can't generate as high quality results because you ended up subverting the entire ecosystem of what you've already built with Google search. This is going to be a time where it, th there might be some big shakeup in a lot of the creation of just general content space whether it's for food blogs or otherwise, potentially even here on YouTube, when it comes to AI generated uh, as summaries of the videos, there could potentially be a lot that gets undone by what Google's trying to do here. But they're not gonna stay behind OpenAI because they also announced that they will have new video and photo generation with Imagine and Vio, which is going to make the AI stuff just look okay. And it's all available. You can check it out on their lab experimental version of what they have for AI but they are expanding their Synth ID AI digital watermark to be made more broadly available for the video and tech stuff so that in case you can't tell whether or not something's AI generated, you can run it through the Synth ID and you can find out, which doesn't help when you know it's all circulating Facebook and your grandpappy is sharing something that is completely nonsensical, but uh, the regular person's not necessarily gonna know the difference. But AI is gonna know the difference of your real world because Google's gonna launch Gemini Live Live, which essentially is like a Google lens, but with video, which allows you to just kind of look around at things and talk to the AI and it'll respond back to you. So you could say, hey, what's Syngap 1? And then it'll respond to you and tell you all about it. They also showed off their models with Gemini 1.5 flash being a little lighter weight, making it easier to run faster. And then they're gonna have 2 million token remembrance on their pro model. So there's there's a lot of uh, technical jargon that Google discussed, but they also showed off a successor to the Google Glass, potentially. Somebody in one of the demos for Google Live ended up picking up glasses that they then just went around talking to the AI with. So. Is, is this the is this Google Glass 2.0 or are they gonna be working with with Meta to come out with a version that implements Gemini? It's hard to say. But all I know is that Nelly was a prophet of the future. Whoa! -oh! AI AI whoa! -oh. Nailed it. And I think your future would look better if you check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Soylent, not the one made of people, the one powered by plants. We've been extra busy here at UFD Tech since we just hit 900K subs and we're working hard to crank out the content to try to hit that one milli mark. Thankfully, I've had Soylent as a quick and easy way to keep myself going. Not only is Soylent the culmination of years of research, clinical trials, and rooted in science, but it's packed full of macro and micronutrients, including 20 grams of plant-based protein. On top 
of being packed with nutrients, Soylent is also just delicious. Their Kantar Research award-winning formula consistently comes out on top when pitted against competitors on creaminess, smoothness, and taste. My personal favorite is the Cafe Mocha. I'm holding here the creamy chocolate, which is my wife's favorite. I'm out of the Cafe Mocha, but we have one creamy chocolate left. For me, the Cafe Mocha is creamy, it's chocolatey, and I love the little kick of caffeine it gives me. And Soylent's great because they put in the work to find the very best ingredients to give you the most nutrient-packed drink possible. You won't find a single fat ingredient in a Soylent drink. Every ingredient is handpicked to work in synergy with one another. You can improve your diet today and check out Soylent via the link in the description. The first 500 people to click our link and use code UFDTECH25 will receive 25% off their subscription with Soylent. A huge thank you to Soylent for sponsoring today's video. And while Soylent makes my life simpler, it looks like Qualcomm is going to make laptop manufacturers' lives simpler because they're cheaper and more battery efficient, and that's what's coming out with the upcoming Snapdragon X chips that are going to be put into various different Dell laptops. Details are coming out about the summary of costs and also internal testing about how these chips perform, showing that it's about 98% better battery life than the previous gen chips that Intel had out, not Meteor Lake, but rather the Raptor Lake chips, and Qualcomm themselves have said that compared to Meteor you're like it's about 43% longer battery life but a bigger deal there is that Dell has shown off that it's actually cheaper for them to just go ahead and go with Snapdragon X Plus the cost is about half of what it costs to get a Raptor Lake i7 and if performance is anywhere near that and you're getting better battery life then it might be a much better idea for these companies to sell the laptops at the same price to you 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 pay the same amount but they make they make more money. But AMD is trying to sell chips for a little cheaper because yesterday they launched the 8400F and the 8700F budget CPUs. These are Zen 4 chips that are like the APUs, but they don't have the APUs. They got no integrated graphics. That's what the F stands for. Frick integrated graphics. We don't want them here. All my homies hate integrated graphics. Exactly. Intel calls their chips F for fudge out of here. And that's what AMD is doing here as well. Ryzen 7 has 8 core, 16 threads, 5 gigahertz boost. It has Ryzen AI. The Ryzen 5 chip does not. So uh, don't buy Ryzen 5 because you'll be left behind in the wave of AI for the future. And then what they show off is that it beats the 14400F in the games and benchmarks that they tested. One of the things to note in these benchmarks is that they say that the 8400F and the 8700F are faster in Elden Ring. Kyler, why don't we benchmark Elden Ring? Capped at 60 frames. It's capped at 60. 60 frames. So if AMD is showing off that they are 20% <clears throat> faster in Elden Ring, do you know what that means? They're benchmarking a modded version of Elden Ring. They uncorked it. That doesn't... They're not disclosing that. What do we do about, what do we do about? What other mods are they just doing behind the scenes that they're not telling us about that are giving them an advantage, huh? Because they should be exactly the same. Weird charts, AMD. What do you, why is Elden Ring in this? It's the 60 FPS game. Horizon 7 is going to cost $270. Horizon 5 is going to cost 170 boats. Let me know if you're interested in those. While Reese lets you know what deals interest him today for you to pick up. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals. Bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D going for what I think is the lowest price ever at $214.99. You'll find in the weeks leading up to Computex now, there'll be a lot of price drops over a lot of different products, so keep an eye out. But then next up, we have this XFX Speedster Swift 319 Radeon RX 6800 XT going for only $409.99, making it $60 off. Be warned, it is a massive card, so, uh, Double check the space in your case first. And then lastly, we have this MSI Modern 14 Ultra Thin Laptop featuring a 14 inch 1080p display, an AMD Ryzen 7 7730U, 16 gigs of DDR4, and a 512 gig NVMe SSD for only $449.99 after the rebate, bringing your total off to $250. And hey, them's the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. I'm waiting on a deal for this next handheld from Ein because they've announced a little thing that's got my mind imagining uh, playing in bed with something that looks like a PlayStation Portable. That's a nice looking design, but got a couple things under the hood that make it a little cooler, like the fact that it has a mini LED display coming in at 1100 nits, a million to one contrast ratio, and 155% of the sRGB color space. And it only weighs 320 grams, but the kicker there is that they've announced that it's not going to be running Windows, which probably means that this is going to be like one of the Android devices that we've seen with the iNeo Pocket Elite or whatever it was that we tested a little while back. Pocket Plus, do you remember what it's called? Pocket House? 
Pokemon. Power World. Paw Patrol? Maybe it's Paw Patrol, maybe it's Maybelline, or maybe they finally got access to some form of Linux gaming that's very similar to SteamOS, but Valve didn't give it to them. I... I would hope it's that. Uh, mini LED screen is going to be wasted on Android gaming handheld. Uh, but what also could be wasted is your Thunderbolt port on your Intel laptop or your Intel dock. But now, Intel wants to make sure that you're using it because they announced a new feature for Thunderbolt called Thunderbolt Share, which allows you to seamlessly data transfer between PCs. So you can connect the Thunderbolt ports on two computers. You can connect them to each other or to a dock or to a monitor that supports Thunderbolt. And that'll allow you to share screens, keyboards, mice, storage, and files between those two devices. It's kind of like a fancy, super fancy KVM switch where you can do a whole lot with it. It doesn't seem like it's a flashpoint feature where this is what should grab your attention or should be the main thing at a keynote, but it's just a nice little addition to Thunderbolt in case you want to use it. In case you were thinking about using one of NVIDIA's upcoming Blackwell GPUs, uh, you're too poor for it. I'm too poor for it. Kyler, even if we sold our bodies to science, we were both too poor for it because they are looking to cost $70,000. Obviously, I'm referring to the compute chips that they're releasing, but this appears to be a very, very high price point for the upcoming Blackwell chips. And the server racks are allegedly going to be costing 3 million bones. So for just one GB200 super chip at 70 grand, that is significant because that is way more than what the previous generation was going for just in the tens of thousands, not edging close to 100,000. In the aftermarket, there was some reports, especially with the shortage that was seen with AI chips towards the end of last year and beginning of this year. Some of the private party selling got into the six figures, but not from Nvidia Direct. But according to reports, the average selling price from Nvidia for these Blackwell's chip is between 60 and $70,000 per GPU, which does not bode well for what is coming down the pike for gamers. Absolutely uh, hold on to your wallets and uh, cry that AMD does not have a high-end competitor to uh, check NVIDIA. If they can check NVIDIA on the lower end, you get the 8700 XT that can compete with a, I guess, what would it be, a 5070? And they're charging three, 400 bucks for it, that'd be great. That would help keep things in line reasonably. Maybe Intel's our only hope. We gotta, we gotta hope for battle mage. There be our mage in the battle of proper GPU pricing. I am not excited for what this next year, year and a half is going to look like, but I am excited to check out your comments. So let's check over on Floatplane from yesterday's episode of Hot News. Mark Spark coming in saying, hot single near you, now powered by GPT-40. You joke, but there's entire startups that have been based around these AI waifus, like that they've been promoted on a bunch of social media platforms. It's a thing that already exists. There was a very popular one, what was it called? Replica? Replicants? Replicants, something like that. It, it went around, uh, but now, yeah, G GPT-40, somebody's just gonna reskin that and just uh, give it the instructions to be your anime waifu girlfriend. And I, I'm worried. I'm legitimately, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little open and honest about how I feel about all of this. I think that a lot of the things that companies are trying to pitch for AI are only going to help contribute to the disconnection that we have as people and like our interpersonal communication is going to grow less and less and I I'm not for it I like I when I look at like oh hey you can do this without ever talking to a person ever again in my mind I go that's a terrible thing that's not going to have good results in about five to ten years but then also I realize that uh, I'm sure Kyler is laughing to himself right now. I'm a curmudgeon who will do everything with his tech to make sure he doesn't interact with a person if it's at all possible, which I think there's a little bit of disparity between what I uh, believe and what I'm acting out. And I think I need to correct that. Kyler, we need to start like going to the man's checkout at grocery stores. I do that sometimes. I think, I think, I, I think I need to put my actions where my brain is. We, we're, we're gonna start we're gonna start in interacting with people again. That's that's the new thing I'm gonna uh, have on my mind for the next few months. Just no more DoorDash. No. More, when was the last time we DoorDashed anything? That's what I'm saying. Exactly. No more DoorDash. And then over on YouTube, we got Wolfie saying, as a 7900 XTX owner, I'm a little bummed that AMD isn't interested in continuing to release high-end hardware. No competition for Nvidia in the high-end market means they're probably gonna Hulk smash everyone's wallet. Not if you don't let them. Not if you don't buy it. If everybody stays on their 30 and 40 series cards, 
20 series. If you stay on the 1650 and the 1060, well then you can show them to drop the price. It happened with the 4080 Super. Not enough people bought the 4080. They did drop the price. There is precedence. We gotta, we gotta hold the line. And we got Chris saying, reportedly Windows 10 market share is actually growing now. Windows 11 market share is shrinking. What will be Microsoft's response? I discussed that here on Hot News. That was a that was a talking point, or was that just in a short? I can't remember. We did discuss that. Um, I think. I think the notion that Microsoft was going to can Windows 10 next year was always farcical, but there are, uh, th there, there is like this, like glimmer of, uh, reports coming out from Satya Nadella, like internally, what he's saying is break compatibility, break backwards compatibility. If it's in the name of security and advancing forward, lock it down. Make sure that everything's secure and say hi heavens to whatever it was working with before. Um, so I think Satya Nadella's vision for Microsoft might not uh, allow for Windows 10 to continue to be supported, regardless of how many people update it, because what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to switch to Linux? Nobody wants to buy a MacBook. And then we got Monkey saying, shout out to Rocco Mamas. I still have an orange black star sticker randomly stuck to my work monitor after ordering lunch from them one day. My favorite burger was the Daywalker, bacon cheese egg with sticky barbecue sauce, but they discontinued it. Now I just have to build it from the old school base each time. My personal favorite is the Rockstar because that thing is slathered with onions. I, Rocco Mamas is, is the best burger place that just lives according to my heart mouth desires the, the rock star is great kyler did, how many burgers did you try when we were in south africa last year quite a few right two or three, two or three? what was your favorite do you remember any of them the, the, there was like a, a cherry bomb one or something one that was like super spicy uh oh not uh it's not a cherry bomb um oh i know what you're talking about but yeah they're little balls right like little spicy balls. Yeah, it was, uh, or, or it was ch chili something. I don't know. Chili bomb sounds more chili reasonable. That spider! Did you where? see that? No. Oh, it just spider man down from the ceiling onto the table. Where? Where? Oh, I see it. That was really cool to see. All right, I'll see you back here for hot news tomorrow. <laughs>